What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat. Today we're playing a little bit more This Land is My Land, which I didn't expect to be this popular on the channel. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was just kind of checking back in on it to let you guys know that it was on Steam now. And then all of a sudden it took off and it's what everybody wants to see. So you know what? I'm a crowd pleasing kind of guy. So here we are. Here we are. In the previous episodes, we have raided a lot of enemy camps. We have done a lot of damage. We rescued some dudes from prison, and it worked out pretty well. It didn't go too badly. These guys look like they're on their way back with like a whole bunch of, well, we've got one group out there getting flax, and we've got another group out there getting themselves some wood. So it's coming around. So anyway, sorry, I had to make a cut right there because there was like a piece of lint in my mouth. I don't know why. I was hanging out with my dog on the couch before I recorded this, and we were just having like a sesh. You know what I mean? All curled up in the blankies and whatnot. And, uh, apparently some fuzz got in. I don't know. Either way, we need to get some skill points. Uh, we're expanding out pretty quickly. I think it's probably a good idea to go and talk with these guys down in Kawashan. We have a horse, so why not? Let's go. I stole this horse. Look, we committed Grand Theft Horsey. That's right. Pretty good at my job out here. Committing Grand Theft Horsey like crazy. Looks like the camp we're trying to go for is in this area. So let's go ahead and roll out. Nansaula is overpopulated. Yeah, well, that's just the way life kind of goes, unfortunately. That's just the way things go in Albuquerque. All right, let's head on down here, and yep, maybe I can sneak through that little gap right there. That'd be great. I prefer not to make a whole lot of detours right now. If you can get a horse, I suggest you get a horse early because your travel distances are going to get pretty brutal over time. Uh, the horse piloting, I'm going to call it horse piloting, I guess, can be a little bit difficult to manage. Like, it's a little, it's easy to overcorrect. I'll put it like that. Sometimes you get a little bit more turning out of the horse than you expected. The turn radius on this horse well right here, fantastic. You're never going to see a better one. Oh, Shingoda's off that way. Okay, let's go to Shingo. Apparently, I rode right past it. But then again, this horse has all the crazy tack and whatnot, so that's pretty cool. I would like to get another village over here if I can. Let's go ahead and dismount off the horse real fast. These guys already have their own horses, which is really, really swell. Hey, you there, buddy. What's going on? How you doing? Will you join our fight? We will join you as soon as you have five camps. Okay, so we need five camps in order to make them happy. At the moment, we currently have, I guess, one, two, three... So we've got three camps. We're going to have to make a few more camps before this whole thing comes together. They've brought the wood back to the camp, which is great, actually. I should probably send them out on how much wood do we have in total. We have 53 wood, so those guys are gathering flint right now. My suggestion would be that we send these guys back out. I'm going to try again, and you guys can be equipped. Grab whatever it is that you think you need. I will give you some arrows for those couples of bows. And then what I'd like you to gather is really we just need boar pelts. Like, that's pretty much 100% of it is that we need boar pelts. And if we can't find boar pelts, okay, I guess I'll only send out three guys maybe? All right, so there you go. We'll send out three guys. Go find my boar pelts. There we go. I doubt that they need all that stuff right there. There we go. We'll send them on out. They brought ammo and whatnot with them. I don't think they're going to need it, but hopefully they can find some boar pelts. If they can't find boar pelts, it's going to be kind of a major issue for us. Uh, we've got boars down there to the south. Unfortunately, I don't have the skill. I have 478 XP. Yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. Give it to me. I don't know how to use the trading tokens yet. I haven't really been messing around with it. So apparently this item is used. We can send this to a camp. I guess you can use that to kind of trade for the things you don't have with other players or something. I'm not really super sure... Oh, yeah, look, you can do that. One for 11. So apparently you can actually, like, trade things around if you really want to. So we go, like, boar pelts. Let's take a look. So for animal skins, I don't know, like, why. So they're buying, they're selling. So I've got 189 boar pelts right there. Technically, we could get all the boar pelts that we need in order to get this finished off, and we could actually upgrade some of our camps if we really, really wanted to. I think I have, like, a 1,000 trading tokens, so... That's a buffalo pelt. That's not a boar pelt. I need boar pelts. I put in I put in boar pelt. Boar pelt. Yes. Apparently boar pelts are pretty expensive. They are pricey. I would like to buy like I don't know. 
Like maybe like 20 of them. Did it work? I can't decide if it worked. It says I'm disconnected from the social aspects right now. Honestly, I'm not even sure why this game has social aspects. I'll be honest with you. Uh, we've got 20 boar pelts. We will unload that in, I don't know, Nansala? Sounds good to me. We'll unload it in Nansala. So there it is. We've unloaded it in Nansala. That's kind of the fast and dirty easy way to get it done. Seems a little scummy to me though, but I guess that could be kind of a simulation of me trading things with other tribes. So which place is Nensaula? Is it? That's Shingoda. That's Maliwan. There's Nensaula right there. If we wanted to upgrade this place, we have the boar pelts. We just gotta we gotta take some ropes and we gotta take some wood over there. I think that's a hundred percent doable. Like I think we can do that pretty easily. Let's go do it. I want to upgrade this place so that we have two big villages that are able to go and gather. And then with the other boar pelts, what we'll do is we'll find an area that actually has boars inside of it, just in case we can't get those ourselves. And then we'll send people out to take care of that as long as it becomes necessary. My guess is my boar hunters are probably not going to be that successful during this entire ordeal. Just largely due to the fact that there's no boars in the area. It's kind of weird because there was no boars in the area when I was playing the game the other night and they still brought back boar pelts. But there were boars in the neighboring territory, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe you have to be adjacent to a territory where the boars are in order for it all to work. Either way, what I need from you guys is I need wood. I need like 10 of it. Alright, so we have the 10 wood. Don't really have the flax that we need. How many ropes do I have right now? Oh, there's the ropes right there. We already have the ropes. Nice. Well, I will take all of the ropes then. And then we'll ride on up to Nansala. Actually, I can just teleport. Whatever. We don't have to, like, do this the hard way. Go over to here, and we can travel. The point is too close to travel to it. Oh, never mind then. I didn't want to fast travel to it anyways. Apparently, it's, like, right over the hill. And that's the game's way of telling me that I'm a lazy bastard. And I need to really, really dial it on in for the entertainment purposes of my internet peoples. You made me sprint all the way down the hill for this. I'm disappointed in all of you. Every single one of you. I hope you know how disappointed I am. Alright, so now that we have all of the resources unloaded, I think we can expand the size of this place. Yeah, upgrade it to the next camp level. Oh, it actually goes to a loading screen when you do that. How curious. So it actually has to like rearrange the world in order to get that going. So this place now is able to gather, and it's got six people inside of it. Apparently that camp right there is a level three camp. But we've got like one teepee going on over here, which is nice. That'll work. If I could upgrade all the other camps, that'd be pretty sweet, too. I mean, I wouldn't be against it. Maybe I go up to that one, and we do the same thing up there. Because we have boar pelts down here, right? So, like, what's the next level right here? We need sinew, and we need wolf pelts. Okay. That's doable. That's actually easier than the boar pelts, in all honesty. The boar pelts are kind of hard to come by. Not really too worried about it, though. Let's head on off to another location. Like, we're already... Are we already in... We're not in... Cow oh, Kawashan's neutral. That's right. Well, let's strike off over here, then, and see what we can accomplish. So the guy left Shingoda, which is fine by me. That's no biggie. These guys are still gathering flax, of which they've found eight of it. Gonna need more flax. Gonna need more flax. So I'm gonna send out, like, four guys, and I'm just gonna tell them to go gather even more flax. Like, all the flax in the universe. You don't need weapons to gather flax, luckily enough, so don't worry about it. And then with Nansaula, now they can have gather orders as well. So we can send them on out, and we can tell them to go get us... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Go get me... Do you guys have wolves in your territory? I don't know if they have wolves in their territory. Oh, uh, apparently I need advanced chief skills. To do that stuff. That might be actually why they're not gathering the boar pelts too. I don't know. I'm in a little bit of a vex situation. I think I did have the skill that allowed you to harvest things when I was playing the other night, I think. So that counts as an advanced thing? Interesting. Alright. Well, I mean, go gather wood then. Wood is good. I could always use more wood. So the more wood we have running around, that's fine too. Is my horse down here? Did my horse come with me? Horse, you being lazy. Dude, I think, I think Turbo Horse, that's what I've named my horse, by the way. I named my horse Turbo Horse because I have the naming, I have the naming structure of an eight-year-old, all right? I never, I never took the proper classes when I was an underclassman, when I was hanging out, you know, at uni or whatever. I didn't take the, I didn't take the proper classes to learn how to name horses the right way, so here we are now. Here we are now. 
Now that we've knocked out all the important stuff for the day, all we really need to think about is exploration! Going out and enjoying the world for what it is. We finally have enough serfs that'll be running around gathering all the stuff for us that I don't feel like I need to be greedily stuffing my pockets with goodies anymore. If I don't have to, there's gonna be a bear out here, isn't there? There he is right there. Yep, the bear is aware. And I'm stuck on a rock, so that's fun. The bear is on me right now. Really not trying to deal with a bear right now. Can a bear outrun a horse? It's an interesting race. I don't know who wins in that situation, a bear versus a horse. There's rabbits up here. We already wiped out that enemy camp. I do think it's a good idea. Like, how big is the enemy territory here? I don't even see where they're at. Normally there's like a red ring around. Oh, there they are right there. Yeah, they're kind of down there, but I feel like we'll be okay. I feel like we'll be good. We've got another bivouac over here. So maybe we'll check that out. Although we do have kind of a cumbersome ridge right there. Wouldn't be impossible to free climb, but definitely unpleasant. All right, so here we go. We know where their camp is. We've got it all marked up on the map. Now we just got to kind of like execute. So let's do this thing. I don't see smoke from a fire yet. Should be coming up soon. I do hear the sounds. Oh, there's the fire right there. But I was going to say, I hear the sounds of movement. So this might be a risky situation. Where's their other guy? There's always two. Where's the other one? Where's he hiding at? Are they both sleeping, maybe? Seems possible. Let's pay attention to what his patrol path is going to be. My bet is that he's got a little buddy around here. Yeah, there's another guy sleeping on the other cot. Alright, well, let's take him. Let's take him. There we go, he's out. Now we get this guy too, there we go. We're gonna be nice this time around. It's unnecessary that I kill everyone. Instead, we'll just sucker punch them all to death. Uh, let's go ahead and intimidate this guy. Yep, head on your way out. I'm putting the voodoo on you. That voodoo that I do. Here we go. Ooh, I like how we have like the powder horn on us right there. That's a really, really cool addition. I actually didn't notice that we had a powder horn this entire time. You can also loot this guy. Oh, he had a bow? Did he really? Nice, man. Nice, man. See? The settlers do use the same technology that we use. It's just that they try to use, like, the guns and whatnot first. But they gotta get out here and commune with nature. Understand that the clean kill with the bow is the way to do it. That's the way that it's done right there. We're gonna take all of that right there. I do wish that pelts came up a little bit more frequently inside of some of these loot caches. Yeah, I guess I'll take all that stuff. We wiped that place out pretty good. I'll probably head south from here, maybe? I don't know. We just stacked up a few more skill points, so, like, I'm not going to complain about a good thing. Do we have any... So, where's the skinning thing? So, allows tribe members to find rare animal parts when hunting. That's really, really expensive. But for us, we can get meat and sinew and skinning animals. If we get, like, another 400 points, I can get a chance to get pelts. Some of this stuff is just, like, I kind of wish that you had a baseline chance to get it from the beginning. Oh, cool. So this entire, like, neighboring zone has been liberated. Nice. I think Malewan's going to have a few too many people by the time this is all up and over with. But they've got five wood, five flax, 14 flax. Nice. Well, this area, we're like picking it clean right now. I'm happy about it. So we can increase our knife damage. We've got better gathering. Okay. Uh, sneak one is also a really, really good idea just in case. But, you know, we don't really have an opening right now. If we could find a campfire and just deposit everything back inside of a camp, that would be great. So let's go find that. I believe that we have outrun the vicious, vicarious bear that was marauding and pillaging throughout the neighboring territory. So hopefully that'll help out too. If you're wondering why our percentage hasn't gone up, it's because we haven't claimed any side areas. So, as an example... What's wrong with this deer? 
I don't know what was wrong with that deer, but that deer was definitely having some kind of tangible problem. I never turn down sinew when I can get it, so we're going to need a lot of sinew later on. As you can see, the level 3 upgrade for our camp takes a lot of sinew. But yeah, oh, all of the deer are glitched out like in the ground right now. Well, don't mind if I do. Oh, they're not glitched out. Never mind. Oh. Well, that one was. So I assume that the other ones were, but I apologize, game. The glitch deer are not glitch deer. All right, so we've made the requisite drop-offs. Man, look at that landscape right there. One thing they really did a great job of with this game is just kind of capturing natural beauty. I know that sometimes it can feel with this game like you're in the middle of a bunch of, like, empty nothingness. But in all honesty, it looks really, really good. They did a fantastic job with some of these scenescapes. They look really nice. I don't know if the horse is going to want to go in water. Like, I can lead a horse to water, but I don't know if I can make him swim. Let's try. Horsey, can you swim? Oh, that's shallow water right there. We don't even need to worry about that. We can fjord that no problem at all. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Hydro horse. Turbo horse has gained a new ability. His skill points ever rising, becoming stronger. His power level absurd. One thing that I would like to address is kind of the flow of skill points seems to be largely combat based. I do think that it's a really good idea if the developers go through and they start adding little skill point bonuses to just about everything you do in the game. So like 1 to 2 SP, you know, for picking up some flax or some wood or some plants or whatever else. And then you get 5 or 6, you know, increase the amount that you get from crafting a thing. You know, you should get like 5, 6 SP from crafting a thing, you know, out of it. If you make like a potion or a tonic or whatever else. Ooh, another camp. Nice. Time to maraud on through like the crazy person that I am. Let's do this thing. I see enemies. I see red. I think dead. So that's exactly what we're doing out here today. Let's ride up on this little hill right here and see if we can get a better view of the scenescape. On top of that, like hunting an animal should be worth like 20, 30 SP. You know, you kill a buck or whatever. And like when you harvest it, you should just get that SP on top of there. I do think that the game is a little tiny bit tight fisted with SP as of right now. There's so many skills and there's like so many things to buy. And yet actually being able to afford a lot of them is largely really, really reliant on your ability to just raid and attack and kill and destroy. I'd like to see the survival aspects of the game rewarded in the exact same fashion that, you know, all the other stuff is. Are they just, like, building the camp down here? Is it not fully built yet? Let's get down behind this rock. So that dude's over there. There's another one back behind him. Okay. Alright, well, we might have to wait for that guy to patrol to, like, an area. We're doing this in broad daylight, so that's always a complicated situation in this game. Their eyesight is flat out, like, way, way, way better during the day. And so we'll have to account for that. But, let's take a little run through out here. I want to make sure I don't use up all my stamina, though. Because if we use up all of our stamina and this goes sideways, we need to use that stamina to kind of dive into the brush and get away before they can put any real cumulative damage on me. All right. So they are aware... Oh, there he is right there. Okay. Okay. So we're going to stay in the bushes, we're going to stay low, we're going to come up behind right here and hopefully take this guy. My hope is that he's going to walk back past again just like he did with the last patrol, and indeed he did. He's kind of close right now, I feel like it's a bad idea. I feel like it's not the right play. But if he goes a little bit further out, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Just like that. Nope. Ain't get me. Ain't get me. I don't know how that guy saw me through the back of his head, but apparently he accomplished it somehow. And he's now dead. He used to be alive. No longer dead. His name is Choo Choo? I killed a man named Choo Choo, apparently. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What's going on here? What's your name, man? What's your name, pal? Is your name Choo Choo? Because it said you killed Choo Choo for 40, 40 SP. Uh, let's go ahead and loot this guy real fast. He's got a sharps rifle, too. And then we'll intimidate this one. Hopefully it'll even us on out on the old karma. I did have to kill one of them. 
But, you know, sometimes you got to draw that steel. Sometimes you got to deploy them killing hands because somehow this guy has eyes in the back of his head. Maybe he heard me. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he has ear holes that actually function compared to most stealth games. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not the one to make these big decisions. I'm not overweight. We did get a stag pelt out of there, which is pretty sweet. Stag's pelts are kind of hard to come by. We got some glass and we got an old kettle. And so we got positive karma right there. And then we also got 100 SP for that guy. But you see what I mean? Like, combat is really, really heavily rewarded in this game. Whereas, like, all the other activities, I see it as you've got a game world that's full of stuff to do. And about, like, 80% of it isn't really, like, rewarded. When I kill a deer, I should get, like, 30 or 40 SP. You know what I mean? When I kill a wolf, I should get 30 or 40 SP. When I pick a plant, I should get 1 or 2 SP. Like, ways for the player to cumulatively kind of just pick up 100 SP, 200 SP while they're traveling in between locations would be really, really nice. And I think actually recommended on my part. Just basically, like, I, I, th I think the game is a little bit... I think the game is a little bit stingy with SP right now. And I know that, like, from playing before, if you wipe out, like, a really big camp of settlers that has, like, 18 or 19 of them in there, like, yeah, you do get a lot of SP from that situation. But if combat's going to be rewarded, this is not necessarily just a game about combat. It's also a game about surviving and crafting and growing your villages. Like, I think when you upgrade your village sizes, you should probably just get, like, 100 SP for that, you know? Because that's a managerial skill. You've got a, you've got a skill in here called Chief. You know, and you're going through and you're building up your village and you're making it a nicer place to live. You should kind of get rewarded for that. Uh, Malewan has a bunch of people inside of it right now. So we've got Nansaula warriors are looking for... So we've got four warriors. They're looking for stuff. We've got four warriors over here. Yeah, we're going to end up with too many Malewan warriors. So one thing that I have noticed that the developers are going to need to fix is that when you vanquish a camp while guys are out gathering, what'll happen is you get rewarded with more immigration, and the immigrants will go to a town that only has space because your guys are out hunting or gathering, and then when your hunter-gatherers get back, you'll have a population crisis, or, in the worst-case scenario, I've had this happen before, your gatherers will despawn along with all the loot that they have on them, as far as I can tell, and they'll just be gone. Like, they won't even go back to the village, they'll just, like, flat-out disappear. And so, anyways, just little things to think about along the way that needs to be looked at, I think. Uh, I'm not 100% that last situation I just described. That was my interpretation of what happened. But you guys have been on this channel for a long time. You guys know that I get it wrong a lot of the time. So maybe there's a developer out there or something who will be able to give you a little bit more information about what happens in that particular spot. And we have some free loot over here. Five free sinews? Yeah, man. Absolutely. Sinews, great. I mean, honestly, I think you should get SP just for, like, looting things you find along the road, too. Like, every single time you go into a new zone and it find that zone and, like, liberate it, you should be getting 150 SP or so. Like, everything's just so pricey on the skills list. And it has multiple levels, too. Like, the stuff that I've showed you on the skill list is not necessarily just, like, one and done. Sometimes they've got three and four tiers you can buy. And so, anyways, I do think the game could loosen up a little tiny bit on the SP and start rewarding a lot more of the behaviors that are available to the player as you're going through the game. Uh, there's another camp over here. I'm going to have to drop this stuff off back at our main camp, but we are doing a good job just kind of clearing out these areas. If I can get a little bit more flax from all these dudes that are out just kind of running around doing what they do, it'll fix a lot of problems for us. Okay, so with everything on our plate right now, I actually think it's probably a good idea for us to open up another camp. We've got enough ropes right now to where I think that resettling people in another spot is really a good idea. Uh, we can actually take over this little area up here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That wasn't exactly what I wanted just yet. So we don't have a camp down there. We will have a free camp down there, though, if we can open up another one. Let's maybe go, like, right there. We'll put something along the outer reaches of that area. I wish that we had, we could take this little area over. I do feel as though, maybe it just has to do with the radius on this whole thing. Can these guys settle? These guys can't settle. So we need to get to a level 3 camp before we can settle even more. As of right now, I'm really just making space for all of the warriors and stuff that I have. Yeah, let's put somebody by the outer boundary up there. Send a couple of warriors up that way. We'll send three of them, and we will equip them, because why not? We'll send them with the stuff that they need in order to make that camp. 
That's the 20 wood that we were looking at right there. If we can make a little bit more rope, I actually wouldn't be against sending out yet another group. These guys are almost back with 17 flax, which is going to allow us to make enough ropes to, I think, bang out... Yeah, that'll give us... I, I think that'll give us enough rope to bang out yet another camp. I'm not positive that we have enough wood to make that happen, but it's possible that we might. So there we go. We'll take all that stuff right there. We've got a little bit more SP. We'll put that to the camp. We'll put that to the camp. Uh, this place is clearing out right now. We've got space for one more person in Maliwan. Well, I'll probably put another camp up and over on this side just to kind of, like, defend this area, I guess. Like, I'm trying to cover all of our bases here, so maybe I'll put one down there in Homisa. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. That'll expand our reach a little bit. And then we can decide how we want to do all this. They can also get coyote pelts from down here too. And they'll get bear pelts from that area. So that's pretty sweet. I was a little bit remiss to send anybody up to this top corner. Just due to the fact that there's a lot of bad guys around. We've got bears over there that are really kind of terrifying. Where's all of my random... Yeah, take the locket, the lantern, the lamp oil, the glass. Like, take all of these trading items right here. And let's see if maybe we can take those up. And it's possible we might be able to unload some of this stuff on the trader. Like, we haven't really looked at traders lately. But I think it's a good idea to do so and just figure out, is that another place that I can get hides from? You know, what if this guy's sitting on top of, like, 10, 20 boar pelts and I can upgrade, like, three or four more camps up to the next size and get them ready to roll? You know, I, I think it's worth investigating, especially now that we've got an inventory full of rough scrap that we can unload. So let's go check this guy out. There he is. The guy that I almost accidentally murdered. Hopefully he's forgotten about that. Apparently he's not much of a sleeper because he's still awake right now. It's like really, really late or really, really early. You looking for a barter? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have? You have gunpowder. You have sacks and turnover pistols. Okay, I'll put that in there. Oh, I don't want you to have my firewood. The fireweed leaf is mine. I'm going to keep the fireweed leaf. I'm going to keep that for myself. Thank you. Wow, he's actually not going for most of this stuff. All right, I agree. We can take that. The apples are nice, too. We can use those for, like, apple drinks. Due to neutral karma, your prices are average. A Saxon turnover pistol. Is that one of the ones, like, so the turnover pistol, I think that's the one that has a joint in the middle of it where you fire it and then you can rotate the barrel and fire it again. They came up with all kinds of really interesting solutions back in, like, the 1700s and whatnot to achieve multi-fire without actually having to achieve, you know, full auto bursting or whatever. Like, there's a lot of really, really unique pistols from back in those days. I would check out a channel. There's a channel called Forgotten Weapons. It's really, really cool. Like, I'm not even, like, a big gun guy. And Forgotten Weapons is a really dope channel where this guy who is essentially a gun appraiser, he's a guy that knows everything about, like, guns from antiquity and whatnot. He knows a lot of stuff about antique firearms. He basically goes to different shows, and he asks people before the auctions where these rare weapons from, like, the 1500s go for sale. He's like, hey, do you mind if I sit here and I talk about the gun for my YouTube channel? And that's what he does. And he's had some really, really interesting firearms on that channel. Like, some incredibly interesting firearms. Definitely check it out. But anyways, we're out of time for the day. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me for another episode of This Land is My Land. I hope you all had a wonderful day. Leave a like on the video if you want to see a little bit more. And other than that, I'm Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie gaming every single day so you don't have to. Stay tuned. Tomorrow I will have something hot and fresh off the skillet for you. And until then, have a wonderful day. Goodbye, everybody.